Hi everyone, thanks for watching. My name's Andrew from smartgardenguide.com and I really wanted to make this video about how to water house plants because I find it the most difficult aspect of house plant care and I know that a lot of you guys do too. It's the one place you really can go wrong with your house plants and sometimes it's hard to know exactly where you went wrong. So I'm gonna run through how I water my house plants and then I'm gonna cover some of the most common mistakes that people make when they water their house plants and how you can prevent them. So I'm just gonna talk through what I do when I water my house plants. So I've got an example plant here. This is my Peperomia graviolans. So this is a succulent plant and um, doesn't need an awful lot of water, but it uh, is ready to be watered now. So I thought I'd use this one as an example. So. A few times a week, I go around all my house plants and I check them to see if they need water. And I only water the plants that actually need watered. If they're, um, you know, if the soil's still damp, if I don't think they need watered, I'll just take a note of it and I'll wait another few days and check them again. And the things I do are, I look at the plant and see, is it wilting? Does it look healthy? The next thing I do is I feel the soil. So I literally just without even taking it out of the decorative pot I just feel into the soil with my finger and see does that feel dry and if I'm not too sure I'll dig my finger down a wee bit deeper. The next thing I do is I lift the plant out of its decorative pot and feel how heavy it is. So wet soil is heavy and dry soil is much much lighter and over time you'll get used to how heavy your, your plant should be when it needs watered. Um, so, you know, if you lift it out in the field, my goodness, that's really heavy. Must mean there's a good load of moisture still in the soil. Alternatively, if you lift it out, you'll, you'll really get used to this very um, quickly. You, you'll be able to tell almost instantly, oh my goodness, that plant pot feels really light. It needs watered. The next thing I do is I just check the, through the drainage holes, I feel through the drainage holes and see, mm, yeah, that, that feels dry. And for a succulent plant like this, I want all the soil to be dry before I water it, and it is. So the next thing to think about is how do you actually water this? Well, there's two main ways. You can either water it from the bottom or water it from the top. Now, I know a lot of people like to just keep their plant in the decorative pot where it is on the shelf and go round with a, a watering can and just add a wee bit of, bit of water, splash a wee bit of water on top. And don't add too much or it'll run out the bottom and um, that'll create a bit of work. And this definitely is not the thing to do. What I do with all my houseplants is I bring them in to the kitchen. This is where I water my, my houseplants. I um, examine them first of all, and then I actually water them from uh, the top with a watering can. So all I do is I just um, get my long neck watering can. Rather than watering over the foliage, I go in at the base and I just add a little bit of water. And then I watch as it sinks into the soil. And once that little bit of water has sunk into the soil, I'll add another little bit of water, okay? Now, what I do usually is I leave it in the decorative pot. So I do, um, and the reason for this is I want obviously the water that does drip out the bottom to be caught in the decorative pot. So what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of water and you don't want to flood the plant with water so that the water uh, overflows over the top of the plant pot because it'll take soil with it and it'll make a, a bit of a mess, particularly if you're not watering it in the decorative pot. So again, then I'll water another little bit. And your soil should always be well draining. So whenever you do water your plant, you should see the, the water soaking in within a few seconds. If water sits on top of the soil for a prolonged period of time, your soil probably isn't well draining enough and that can cause a lot of problems in and, in and of itself. So I just keep going, watering this a wee bit at a time, a wee bit at a time. And actually what I like to do is I like to um, water it sufficiently so that the outer decorative pot starts to fill up with water. And the benefit of this is that it makes sure that all the soil gets nicely soaked because I don't just want to add some water to the soil, let it run through. Some of the soil will get wet, but parts of the soil will actually uh, you know, remain dry because actually sometimes dry soil can almost repel water for the first few seconds. So it's really important to let the water come in contact with the soil for a reasonable length of time. So once I've given it a real good soak, 
I've added loads of water in, I can usually see the water starting to fill up the outer decorative pot. I leave it just for about a minute or so to let all the soil get nicely wet and then I lift the plant out of the pot and now the thing I notice is the plant pot feels really heavy so it does because it's it's absolutely so the soil is absolutely soaked with water and then what I'll do is obviously you can see the water dripping down there out the bottom I want to make sure that this plant uh, is really well drained before I put it back so I'll typically just let the, the water, the excess water, drip out for a wee while. Um, usually what I do is I leave it in the sink and let that continue to drain because I want my soil to be nicely, uh, uniformly moist, but I don't want it to be soggy because I need oxygen to get into the soil as well. So I empty the excess water out of my decorative pot and I leave that plant there and um, come back to it in a wee minute once it's drained. So the other way you can water your house plants is bottom watering. And this is also a very good strategy and it's uh, you know, a fairly low maintenance way of watering your plants. So this croton plant, again, feeling the soil there, it's pretty dry, lifting it up, it feels pretty light. And through the bottom drainage holes, well, actually these drainage holes are quite small, so it's hard to feel, but certainly this one is ready to be watered. So the other thing you can do is you can just fill a basin full of water or you can fill a sink full of water. And all you do is pop your plant in, just a couple of inches of water and let it sit. And what'll happen is the soil in the plant pot will soak up the water by capillary action. And this can take maybe five to 10 minutes or maybe a little bit longer for a large plant. And after a while, when you feel the top of the soil, you'll feel that it's completely wet, completely soaked. And this is a really good way of watering your plants in a really gentle way. It doesn't disrupt the soil. It doesn't leach all the nutrients out of the soil. I don't particularly like it because it means I need to leave my plants sitting in water for 10 minutes and I've got a lot of plants. So um, it, you, it, you know, it, it would obviously take me a lot longer to water my plants. So I sort of do a, a hybrid approach where I water from the, from the top a bit, but I use a bit of a reservoir uh, in a decorative pot to water from the bottom as well and make sure the plant uh, gets a good drink. So we'll go back to my Peperomia graviolans. So once we've left it for a few minutes, uh, I'll check again, sort of tilt it to the side a wee bit and see, does the, has the excess water stopped draining? And once it's stopped draining completely, I just pop it back in its decorative pot, give the decorative pot a wee dry to make sure um, that it's not going to mark whatever surface you're putting on it. And then that's it. You can uh, send that plant back to uh, its normal place on display. So the next thing I thought I would have we chat about is just some of the common mistakes uh, that people make when they water their house plants. So I've already mentioned number one, and that is not soaking the soil. Um, so this is a really common one and um, people don't water their plants enough they don't soak the soil and if you don't if you just add a little bit of water to your plant pot uh, the water runs through starts draining out the drainage holes and you assume your plant the soil is completely wet and the reality is it's usually not it's usually just a tiny portion of the soil that has absorbed some of that water but a lot of it has run through so soak the soil make sure it gets completely wet and uh, you know, make sure that the roots can get a real good drink. The second mistake that people make is watering on a schedule. If you go around and water your house plants once a week, some of them will be ready for uh, to be watered, some of them won't, some of them will be drooping, but some of them, the soil will still be, uh, still be wet. And if you water them again, you're increasing the risk of root rot. So always just, if you've got a load of house plants, go around, Feel the soil and take a quick check on them uh, a few times a week. That's all it takes. And really, I mean, I have uh, probably about 70 or 80 house plants at the minute, and it takes me five minutes to go round, five, 10 minutes to go round and just check um, whether any of my house plants need watered. And I do this a few times a week. And then there'll, there'll be a portion of those house plants that do need watered, and I'll then water those ones and put them back. And then check again in another. Uh, another wee while. The other mistake that people quite often make is not thinking about the type of plant that they're looking after. So they treat all plants the same. They think, you know, okay, the top of the soil feels dry, time to water your plant. 
and it really does depend on the type of plant that you're you're watering so plants like cactuses a lot of succulents uh, things like snake plants that are very popular they like their soil to dry out completely other plants like calatheas um, alocasias uh, this stromanthi trio star they really like to live in uh, lightly moist conditions all the time so as soon as the top surface of the soil dries out they need watered so it really does depend so you need to just read up on whatever plant you've got um, or even just check the care information that might have come with your plant whenever you you bought it and water it you know according to what the plant needs um, rather than just taking a one-size-fits-all approach with your plants the next thing to think about is where to water your plants. And again, I've alluded to this one, but um, don't water the foliage of your plants. The, the, the leaves don't need any water. You want to get the water down to the roots. So if you're using a watering can, go in at the base, go in and water the soil, water a wee bit at a time to soak the soil completely. If you get the foliage wet on a regular basis, this can cause a lot of problems. Now, it maybe doesn't make sense immediately because you think well plants live outside they're constantly getting their leaves wet why would it be a problem inside and the reason for that is lack of ventilation uh, and what this results in obviously there's there's no wind in our homes and ventilation is a lot lower than it is outside so if you get the leaves wet the water will sit on the leaves for much longer than it would outside and this makes a perfect breeding ground for bacteria and fungal infections that can, can affect your plant. Now, if you get the leaves wet on the odd occasion, it's not gonna make a difference. Um, even if you do it regularly, it may not make a difference, but it does increase the chance that you're gonna have problems. So I would generally advise, you know, keep the leaves dry. And um, the other, other thing, of course, actually, is sometimes um, tap water contains quite a lot of uh, dissolved minerals. And if you get the leaves wet repeatedly, then as that water evaporates, it'll leave those mineral deposits on the leaves. So it can um, sometimes affect actually the look of your leaves and make it more likely that you're gonna to have to clean the leaves regularly to get those, that residue off the leaves. So definitely something to avoid. The next mistake that people make is misting their houseplants. Particularly, you know, if you're thinking that misting is gonna improve the humidity around your houseplants or even uh, that it's going to be a method that you can water your houseplants. It's just not effective. Um, you're going to run into that problem of getting the leaves wet that can increase the risk of uh, bacterial and fungal infections, but you're also just not achieving anything. Um, if you mist your houseplants, it really doesn't impact the humidity levels for more than a very short period of time, and it certainly doesn't provide enough water uh, for the vast majority of plants to survive. Okay, there are exceptions, definitely there are, uh, but in general, misting your house plants um, is, is a waste of time. It might make you feel better, but it doesn't do much for the plants. The next thing is a very popular uh, a bit of common wisdom, and that is using ice cubes to water house plants. This seems to be particularly prevalent for watering orchids. Um, you just apparently you're meant to just add a couple of ice cubes to the growing medium um, of a phalaenopsis orchid once a week and that'll do your orchid and I just don't think this is a very good idea at all because well number one ice cubes only contain a small amount of water so that melts soaks into the growing medium but it only it doesn't really soak uh, the growing medium it doesn't really um, get all the roots wet which is what they need the second thing is ice cubes are really cold and houseplants and orchids in particular just aren't used to experiencing cold temperatures like that. So you're, you're actually causing stress to your plants. I'm not saying it's gonna kill your orchid if you water it with ice cubes, but it's just not the most effective way of doing it. Again, you should wait until they need watered. Thoroughly soak the uh, growing medium and then let it dry out um, exactly as you, you would with your other houseplants. The next thing to think about is type of water. So most plants are absolutely fine with tap water. Um, if you don't have particularly sensitive plants, um, I mean, a few that I've got here, I've got a, a lemon tree, a, a monstera, a satin pothos, they're all fine with tap water. And even if it does have 
quite a lot of dissolved minerals or a bit of fluoride or chlorine in the water, it's not going to um, have too much of an impact. But there are certain plants that really don't like having impurities in the water, and these include Stromanthi, Treostar is absolutely famous for this, uh, Calatheas as well, Alocasias, Ferns, um, plants with very delicate foliage. Um, if you have a lot of chlorine or fluoride or dissolved mil minerals, or if you live in a hard water area, you can end up with brown edges in the leaves, brown tips in the leaves, or brown patches. And certainly this Stromanthi Treostar, uh, th these are really sensitive plants, and if you want to keep them in good condition, you should definitely consider using distilled water or rainwater. Um, it's not essential, but um, certainly if you're running into problems with some of your more sensitive plants, think about what's in your tap water because it could be making a difference. The next thing to consider is that it's really important to react to seasonal changes with your plants in regards to the watering. So your plants will grow slower in autumn and winter Temperatures are typically cooler, and um, you know, both the, the water use of your plant and the amount of evaporation from the soil and transpiration from the leaves of the plant is going to be considerably less than it would be in summer. And as a result, the water requirements are going down. And where this becomes a particular issue is if, you're, if you've been really careful with the watering of your plant and you always check it before you water it and you get into a routine and you sort of know okay this plant needs water once a week and then you get a bit lazy and you stop checking it then as autumn and winter approaches and the water requirements of your plant go down then you can end up over watering your plant and this actually happened to me with a Calathea zebrina quite recently I thought I had this plant cracked. I'd um, got it in quite poor condition and spent about a year uh, restoring it to health and it was doing absolutely brilliantly and I'm so proud of it. And then I just got a little bit lazy with watering and one day I came in and the leaves were curling and they'd all turned yellow and I realized, my goodness, I've overwatered this and I caused root rot and this oh, i'm so disappointed so but if if i listened to my own advice it wouldn't have happened if i checked the plant every time before watering it it would have been absolutely fine so um that's that next thing to think about with watering and actually this is absolutely crucial it's pots so size of pot and material of pot makes a huge difference in terms of watering so you need to pick a pot that is a suitable size for your plant because if you plant your uh, house plants in pots that are really big and you water them and you soak the soil there's this big mass of soil that's going to take ages to dry out and because that soil is staying very very wet for a long time it just makes root rot so much more likely so if you put your plant in a pot that's an appropriate size um, that's going to let the soil dry out quicker and it's going to reduce the risk of root rot um, an awful lot more. The other thing that can do this is the pot material. So if you pick a porous pot, some of the water is going to seep out through the walls of the pot and the soil is going to dry out quicker. And that's another good way of reducing the risk of root rot. Alternatively, if you have plants that like to stay more moist, you might want to pick a, a non-porous pot like a plastic or a glazed ceramic pot. The last thing I want to just mention is um, the amount of time between watering your house plants is a crucial indicator of how well you're doing. So I usually try and aim to water my house plants every one to two weeks. I never do it on a schedule, but if a house plant is needing watered every one to two weeks, you're probably not going too far wrong. If you notice that a house plant's needing watered every one to two days, well, something's wrong. It's either in really hot conditions and it's losing a lot of water through transpiration and, and uh, evaporation, um, or it might be root bound. There might be very, very little soil. So whenever you water it, there's actually very little soil. Um, there's actually very little water getting into the soil. The other side of the coin is if you're checking on your house plant and the weeks are rolling by and the soil's still wet, it goes to three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, and the soil is still wet. Well, something's definitely wrong. It may be that the soil um, is very poorly draining, 
or the pot's too big, or the plant is too small, it's kind of the other side of the coin. Um, or you might actually just have your plant in really low light conditions or cool temperatures, and it's not growing, so it's not using the water. So in a situation like this, you water the plant, and the water's just sitting there in the pot. The uh, plant isn't using it, and the soil will be very poorly oxygenated, and it's just a sitting duck to get root rot. So um, you need to take action. You need to change the size of the pot or move your plant to a brighter location where it's going to use more water um, and the soil is going to dry out a little bit quicker. So thanks very much, guys, for listening to me. And uh, I hope you find this really um, useful in some ways. Um, I'd love it if you leave a comment below or if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them. And if you've enjoyed this video, uh, please subscribe to the channel and I'll hopefully have plenty more plant care videos coming up for you very shortly. All the best, bye now.